So, Paul, I am so happy to have you here. I know that your time is precious. Time is indeed precious. Um, I'm recommending to people all the time that they go and take a look at your work and 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 immerse themselves in, in what you're presenting there through Wetiko. My question to you at the moment, very relevant, I feel, is once we identify Wetiko and see it at work, once we become less blind that we have been to Wetiko, um, is it a curse that we're under, as your book suggests, dispelling the curse of evil? How do you how do you see this spell or this curse? Yeah, well, that's that's a metaphor, but it's a real metaphor in that, yeah, you could think of it as a curse or a spell, but you know, in the ultimate sense, we're casting it on ourselves. There's no outside entity, even though from the from the relative point of view, we can experience it as if it's uh, this malevolent force or, an, or as if it's an entity outside of ourselves, that's our subjective experience of it. And that needs to be honored on, on, that, on the relative level. But the ultimate, from the ultimate point of view, it doesn't have any intrinsic, independent, objective existence whatsoever in the sense that it's not separate from our own consciousness. So that's really interesting because that's pointing at that Watiko, it, it doesn't even exist, actually, ultimately speaking, and yet it can destroy our species. That's pointing at something. That's pointing at the incredible untapped power that we have within ourselves that we're unconscious of. And one way of sort of thinking about Watiko is that it actually co-ops our intrinsic genius for how we co-create our experience of ourselves and the world. And it, it co-ops it in a way where it gets turned against us so that that incredible, intrinsic, um, God-given ability to create reality, so to speak, with the universe gets, gets turned against us in a way that doesn't serve us. And so what I'm pointing out is that, oh, when you begin to see how that works and you see through that, you then actually take away the power from this, from Watiko while simultaneously empowering ourselves. So I can I can write a book about that. I mean, I, I did. So that's yeah, that's just a little bit. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. That's an amazing description because I I felt with with working with Witiko and also within the groups that I have here, both Full Circle and other groups that I've approached this subject with, there's an almost instant relief and empowerment as they come to recognize and identify with something that yes seems to be external that they have no connection or control to yet suddenly seem to realize it's in it's somehow in their imagination is it in the imagination is that in the mind how do you where is wetiko then is if it's coming from yeah. us being projected yeah. from us what's where's the bug in the system yeah 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 well in a sense it, it doesn't exist in a, in a place in third dimensional space time um but yeah it is a function of our creative imagination but that's a, a tricky word because a lot of people hear the word oh it's just imagination and think that that means it's unreal but the imagination is the primordial experience of, um, you know, it's how we actually give meaning and actually invoke and create our experience of the world and ourselves. So it's a fundamental reality that's interfacing with, with the divine. And um, so the idea or the thought that Watiko, it actually exists in the imagination, that's not to in any way, you know, sort of dishonor it or say, oh, it's merely imagination. No, that's pointing out that the way that we actually um, superimpose like sort of any sort of meaning on our experience or interpret our experience, just like we interpret a dream, we're actually participants in invoking this universe. And, you know, I just want to invoke, because I just finished a book, it's not out yet, um, on, um, phys on quantum physics. And quantum physics totally supports the whole, like, you know, the whole idea of Watiko in the sense that in essence, quantum physics is pointing at that there's no such thing. They've discovered absolutely empirically proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. There's no such thing as an objective world at all. It doesn't even make any sense to talk about the object, the objective reality separate from the consciousness that's observing it. The observer is the observed. And what that means is that the act of us observing the universe is concurrently simultaneously instantaneously invoking the very universe we're observing what i just described is an articulation of being in a dream 
That's exactly what happens in a dream. If we change our perspective in a dream, the dream being nothing other than our own mind projected outside of ourselves has no choice but to shapeshift and reflect back that change in perspective in no time whatsoever. But then if we don't, if we don't have insight into that process, we then become entranced by that seeming objective display, thinking it's other, it's out there, and that it confirms our point of view. So then we get even more entrenched in our point of view, and then the universe, the dream universe, just reflects back giving us all the proof and evidence to confirm the objective reality of our point of view. And we've cast ourselves under a spell, which is our, of our own making, and the origin of that whole process is our own mind. So what I'm pointing out is that when you actually see through that, and it's not just a one-time deal, you see through it, and then it's so easy, just like when you're in a dream and you have you know, awakening in the dream and you're lucid, that's one thing, but it's kind of, you know, it can be easy to fall back asleep in, into the dream and to, to take the forms of the dream as being objective and, and having a reality. So it's a, it's a practice that you cultivate up until you become really stabilized in that. And then once you become stabilized in that realization, then everything, in a sense, um, becomes, you know, kind of, in a sense, it's... It's sort of um, an expression of that realization. Everything is integrated into the realization of, oh, my God, just like a dream. Everything is reflecting back in the outside world some sort of inner psychological process that's going on inside of me. And what I'm pointing out is when you begin to actually enter the doorway where you can begin to see Watiko and Singa, it can't stand to be seen because when you see it, it takes away its power. That's so helpful, that description, Paul. It's, it's so essential. And I'm, I don't know if you're hearing from other people. Probably you are um, being inundated. But there seems to be very much a, a kind of collective awakening into this dream. I'm, I'm here very lucky to be surrounded with some very conscious, very aware, very inquisitive people. Um, and we're all reflecting back to each other this sort of instantaneous recognition of 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 manifesting and creating our 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 reality now it's changing shifting shaping as we speak there's something very very powerful and strong and beautiful breaking through and this dark encrustation seems to be just sliding off I, that's my interpretation of it but i feel that the the darkness if as such has been such an ally to us we haven't recognized it but it's actually shown right. us more than any right. light could have done that the darkness itself is really yeah, our greatest ally and that we come yeah, to yeah, give it so exactly. much gratitude it, yeah, right. Is this... That's exactly it. That's exactly it. That's the major theme of, of my Watiko book is that, you know, what, the thing about Watiko, it's a quantum phenomena and that superimposed, superposed in it. It's the darkest, deepest evil and the highest blessing and how it manifests. It depends if we have the recognition of what it's showing us that the darkness and the eve, the seeming evil of Watiko is the very catalyst for helping us to wake up. It's exactly what you were saying. Because what Tico feeds off of, if we polarize, and if we think, oh, it's evil and it's negative, well, then we're unwittingly feeding it by, by, by dreaming it up in that way. But what you just described, I mean, that's, that's so beautiful because that's an expression of the part of you that's really, that's beginning to realize, wow, I wouldn't have had this realization. I wouldn't have had this awakening without without Watiko. If Watiko didn't exist, we would have had to invent it. Basically, I mean, it's that it's that important for our for us to evolve as human beings. It is. I'm finding it absolutely key. How can how can is it possible to um, give us an example of what you see at the moment? I mean, so much is happening anyway. That's obviously accelerating this process. But is there anything that people can get caught up in, confused by anything that's happening on the broader, perhaps geopolitical scene that people tend yep. to put their attention yes. on? Okay. What would you totally. give as an example? Because the thing about Watiko, it, it tricks us into putting our awareness outside of ourselves. So then, you know, um, if if something's happening on the the you know in the in the world in the in the world theater in the greater body politic whether it's whatever the Orlando thing or whatever the current you know like terrorist attack is or whatever just something like that we can then you know um, put our attention outside of ourselves thinking the problem is out there 
where the thing about Watiko, it's a non-local bug, which means that it can actually, in a certain magical or like this mysterious way, extend itself and seemingly configure actual outer events in the seemingly outside world to reflect an inner process. But being non-local, when it does that, it's actually touching and affecting and triggering and expressing something in us. So it's really easy to just get distracted and put our attention outside of ourselves and think the evil is out there, like, you know, i.e. to project the shadow or to just become kind of under a trance thinking, oh, the problem is out there. And, and But yet, if we dissociate from what's getting triggered in us when we see the seeming evil, where the doorway to really coming to terms with Watiko is to actually recognize that correlation between the inner and the outer and whatever is going on out there, if you actually recognize, oh, this is touching something in me, what's that about? And all of a sudden, self-reflectively put your awareness on what inside of you is getting touched, that becomes the doorway that you're able to assimilate whatever your unhealed, unconscious stuff has gotten activated based on what's playing out out there. And when you're able to metabolize that, then you're in a more integrated state, then you're able to actually be an agent in the world that can actually be of help because you're not just reacting to your own projection, which is unwittingly feeding Watiko, but you're actually being like a proactive agent um, you know, that actually can be of help. Paul, that's, that's amazing. A proactive agent. It sounds just as if this is, um, w w it's like we're becoming activists. It's activating the unconscious. The, the unconscious that's lain that's dormant for so long, that's been yeah. misinterpreted. It's, it's activating this to really step into the light. I, I get the feeling that the shadows themselves want to, are being drawn into the light. We don't even have to go and yeah. find them in the darkness. Well, let me no, say one coming. thing about that. That's so, that's so beautiful because, yeah, the unconscious, I mean, and what is the expression? One of the expressions of the unconscious is when we go to sleep at night and have dreams. <laughs> We're dreaming. We're collectively dreaming. Yeah. And the thing is, is that things, you know, out there in the seemingly outside world seem really dark. The evil, it's not even hiding anymore. It's come out from underground and from in the corners, and it's visible for all who have eyes to see. And the danger is then to just become overwhelmed or identified with despair or depression or powerlessness. But, you know, to, it's helpful to remember when there's intense darkness that simultaneously an absence of light while also being an expression of the presence of light. So the fact that the shadows are coming so out in such a visible way is an expression that on a deeper level, some light is really, really close by. And so, yeah, you're right. It's like the unconscious, it's thirsting to be. I mean, what this is all about is for the unconscious, you know, it always shows up first in projected form when we're unconscious of something, we're identical with it. So we, we, we disassociate, we split it off just in a dream, this is clear, and we project it out. So it always appears outside of ourselves. And then we, if we react to it like it's other than ourselves, then we're just creating karma and we're just feeding Watiko. But the point is to have the recognition that what we're reacting to, we're looking in a mirror. It's our own reflection. It's actually reflecting something in us. That realization is when you begin to take the first step into, into dispelling Watiko. God, it's just so much sinking into all the right places. You know, I feel all the cracks and crevices sort of filling up with the truth of that and resonating. Paul, I find it such an exciting topic. I could talk to you for hours, <laughs> and I know that you can talk also for hours, but I also no, am very much aware that you have many, many other people also um, needing your time. So I really want to bless you, first of all. I'm so grateful. I know many, many other people are very grateful to all the work you've done to expose this and more things, because I know you have other things in the pipeline. You've mentioned... Um, Quantum, quantum physics there, another another book yeah. that's coming to light, and your own book, um, Awakening Through the Darkness, was it? What was the book? You yeah, had something, like that. something like that, Awakened by Darkness. <laughs> Awakened by <And> that, Darkness. <laughs> that, that pointing at that I had my personal awakening through almost getting killed by the powers of darkness. It literally it destroyed my family, it drove me crazy, it almost killed me, and yet here I am and I've come through it, and I was like drawing maps and you know shedding light on what was happening, and that's what helped me discover you know, my work and myself. 
So that's kind of why the title that I was awakened by the darkness. It's what we were talking about before that Watiko, though it seems like the deepest, darkest evil is that encoded in hidden form in the virus because it's like a mind virus. It's actually helping us to wake up. And I guess what one final thing I want to say when an individual begins to wake up to it is one thing, but it's incredibly helpful when, um, you know, these communities, these groups of people begin to wake up to it and connect with each other, and then they can conspire to co-inspire. It's a real conspiracy theory. They can activate the, the genius, the collective genius that's in all of us, and in, in, the, in this way that we can actually um, really help each other to deepen our awakening. And if I could just say one final image in a night dream, if you're in a night dream and you have the recognition that you're dreaming and you have like lucidity, that's great. But imagine just invoking the imagination, because that's kind of how we started. Just imagine if not just you, but imagine one of your dream characters or two of your other dream characters who are just aspects of your own self being dream characters. Or imagine 10 or 100 in that dream. They're also waking up and you're connecting with each other and you're, you're contemplating what you're realizing, i.e. that this dream universe you're in is just a function of your own consciousness. Then, you know, you can put that, it's what I call like, sacred power of dreaming you could put our sacred power of dreaming together in a way that changes the dream and that's evolutionary now what i just described was in a night dream but i'm saying that's the nature of our situation in the waking dream that that's what's available to us incredible paul it's i think it's the most exciting and compelling message really it's 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 well, everything well, there you. so i i so appreciate it gratitude gratitude and more gratitude and um I would love to be able to try and keep in touch and, and as we're all discovering this together, guidelines, anything that comes to your mind, to your heart, to share in this way with us, as you say, with communities, groups of people that are desperate to do the right thing and discover who they are in the process, to me this is the way, it lights the way, it's beautiful. Thank you so much for your Thanks time, Paul. So much. Totally, thank you. Okay, great, take care. Bye-bye now. Okay, bye-bye.